So how do you get a Doberman to stop attacking other dogs every time it sees them? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna help you with in today's video. Welcome back to the Fenrir Doberman Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO of FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to teaching you everything you could ever possibly want to know about the incredible Doberman Pincher and then how to become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect Doberman companions. So if you're new to the breed or you've been a lifelong lover of the Doberman, there's something here on this channel for you. So make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a future episode. But with all that out of the way, Let's dive into this week's Q&A. And I had a very kind of interesting email. I was going through my emails, trying to help as many people as I can. And I got an email from a very distressed uh, viewer of my other main channel, the Fenrir K9 show. And they've got a Doberman, it's 18 months old, and it is highly reactive to every dog it ever sees. Every time it sees a dog, it barking, it's lunging towards them, and she's fearful that if it ever got off its lead or she couldn't hold on to it, that it would then go and attack that other dog and cause serious damage, like Dobermans are very capable of. So, I thought I would sit down, I'd do this video to hopefully help not only her, but then to be able to help anybody else that's experiencing these things to be able to try and mitigate a potential disaster moving forward. Now, when it comes to canine reactivity, especially around vocal reactivity, barking, and then maybe aggressive behavior like lunging or even what would turn into a bite or an attack, it's a very bespoke this is where a canine behaviorist really comes in over a dog trainer. Now, I like to always, with cases like this, break it down into two stages. What I don't ever want to do is simply give you a plaster to the symptom. I think when a positive only approach is tried to be utilized with this kind of extensive reactivity with a breed like a Doberman, what you'll often find is you'll try and distract them remove them with a bit of hot dog and what you'll find is they'll go they'll eat the hot dog thank you very much and they go straight back to the problem and all you're doing is kind of like i say trying to distract them and you if at best if you can achieve it putting a plaster over the issue and that's not something that i will ever do i as a canine behaviorist and with the people i work with want to get to the root cause of a problem and fix it at that level rather than simply using a, a plaster to cover up the symptom now this is another example and I don't feel she did leave names of certain trainers and I never feel confident or comfortable in speaking about those names of where she has gone to five local positive based trainers who have tr two of them tried to work with the dog their methods didn't work and then refused to work with them both citing that the dog probably needs to be put down because they're extremely aggressive and they're too far gone and three trainers that because it was a Doberman and because it was a reactivity case refused to work with them whatsoever now obviously those cases absolutely break my heart and it's where um, I'm naturally drawn to is helping people in these last ditch effort uh, type of scenarios and this is a common theme that comes up I've noticed with Dobermans so what I like to do is it's a two-stage approach. We have to fix it at the root cause, which is where I utilize my canine boot camp protocol. It's a one month protocol. You can check it out in the description box below, but it's designed to restructure the relationship with the dog. It's designed to step-by-step step over four weeks because it's a long process. It's not something that can be done really quickly in one session. It's a process that allows the dog to see that you are its calm, consistent leader and it must respect your authority and look up to you for guidance and direction and that you insist and enforce on rules and boundaries. And a dog that fits in well with those rules and boundaries is a happy, content dog. Now... That is the overarching ongoing process that we work on with all of our clients. And then there's a few specific things that we can do to hopefully be able to address the problem quickly and efficiently to hopefully be able to save that dog's life. Because by the time people come to me, they're often at the point of being ready to potentially have the dog put down. And obviously we don't want that to happen. That's what we do here at Fenrir is all driving towards stopping dogs from going to shelters or being put down. Now, what people need to understand, and I think what this lady needs to understand from the exam the information that I got 
was that the vast majority of this kind of reactive behavior rarely comes from true dominance or true aggression. It most commonly comes from fear or anxiety. That fear or anxiety comes from a dog that doesn't know who to look to for guidance and direction, doesn't know that it has somebody that will take care of the situation, and therefore it thinks that it has to make decisions and then oftentimes is the case, they then make the wrong decision. And that wrong decision is, ah, there's a dog over there. I better bark and lash out. That's not coming from an aggressive place. It's coming from a fearful and anxious place, which is why we always focus on restructuring that relationship. Because what you'll find is through that process, the dog will naturally just go, oh, thank God for that. Somebody can come in and take control. I don't have to deal with this situation anymore. Yes, boss, what should I do? There's something over there that's happening. What do you want me to do? Heal? Okay, cool. I can do that. I know what that means. And that process is so incredibly important. And, and that is why I put such an emphasis on that with all of the clients I work with, with all of these videos that I make. It's something that I think is being lost more and more in the canine companionship world. And we need to get back to a place where dogs see us as their calm, consistent leader, because that is what creates happy, content and relaxed dogs. Now, okay, cool, Will, I get that point. We're going to work on that. But like I said, I've not got a month to wait. This dog's about to get put down if it doesn't get fixed. Okay, cool. So we're working on that. Hopefully that's going to address the issue at the root cause level over the next month. Right now, we're going to address it quickly and efficiently. And especially with a Doberman, we're going to go in pretty firm with a correct redirect and then reinforce approach. We're not going to barter with the dog. We're not gonna bribe the dog because that's not what a good leader does. If my son is doing a really dangerous behavior, I'm not gonna get a chocolate bar out or a 20 pound note and say, please, if you stop doing that and come here, I'm gonna let you have this 20 pound note. He's gonna get told very quickly and very sternly, you need to stop doing that and you need to stop doing it now. And because my son sees, respects my guidance and authority, he will listen to that and it never needs to go any further. A Doberman in the situation like this hasn't got that guidance and direction and they don't necessarily at this stage until we've gone through that boot camp protocol know that they need to listen to it at that early verbal stage. So we're going to use a correct redirect and reinforce approach. I would utilize a Herman Springer prong collar for this. We would get the prong collar on the dog. We would work heel work first so the dog understands what the heel command means and they understand a bit of basic lead pressure as part of that heel work. Once we've got that nailed in a low distraction environment, we're then gonna go straight out to a, a, a higher distraction environment where we might see other things that cause the dog to be reactive. In this case, other dogs. The second that dog displays that negative behavior, it is going to get corrected. Now, we're not going to be playing tug of war. It's going to be a very quick, short, sharp lead correction. Like it's very quick, simple. Ah, and we're going to add in a verbal correction alongside. Ah, ah. And then eventually, the idea behind that is we can remove the physical correction and we're left with the verbal correction. But because it has the association between the two, the verbal correction is then as powerful as the physical correction. But we're going to put in that correction. We're going to snap the dog out of it. That's the correction. Snap them out quickly, efficiently, calmly. As a le I am in control of this situation. You need to stop doing that because you are going to end up getting yourself killed. That's the situation we're in now and I am taking control of this situation. Stop it. That correction goes in quickly, efficiently, and with love and care. We're not here to hurt the dog, we're here to save the dog's life. That correction goes in quickly. We then redirect them and we're gonna redirect them to the heel command. So the correction goes in, we bring them back into heel. If they don't, the correction goes in again, another lead pot. We never get into a, a tug of war game. It's a correction, so it's on, off, on, off, on, off. So we correct, redirect them into heel. If they follow that, then we pour on praise and reinforcement. We want to be living in positive reinforcement land as much as possible. Just because I'm a balanced trainer doesn't mean I don't love positive reinforcement. I do with all of my heart. That's the relationship I want with my dogs. But when we're working with cases like this, and if you at home have a Doberman or any breed with this level of extreme reactivity, we have to be able to, first of all, say, no, you need to stop doing that. 
then redirect them to, yes, I want you to do it. And when they do it, then we go back to pouring on the praise. We do that consistently over time, whilst we're going through that bootcamp protocol to really restructure that relationship. And very quickly, the dog will go, oh, I don't need, what do I need to do, boss heel? Yep, cool. They do it and then we pour on the praise. And like I say, at that point, we can remove the physical correction, leaves us with the verbal correction. And then over time, we don't even need the verbal correction because the dog is going to see us as its calm, consistent leader. And it's going to actively seek out the positive desired behavior first because it knows that positive reinforcement is going to come on. But in severe cases of uh, reactivity, whether it is true aggression or whether it's a fear and anxious response, we need to be able to come in and very quickly and efficiently say, no, stop doing that. This is what I want you to do. Thank you for doing that. I'm really happy. And now you can have some food reward. Now you can have some praise. Now you can have a ruffle behind the ear. Everything goes back positive. Correct, redirect, reinforce. It's a straightforward process, but it takes consistency. And most importantly, it takes calm, consistent leadership. But if you can achieve that, I promise you that with this Doberman, you can have a perfect Doberman companion and you can get there. And anybody else watching at home that might be suffering from these kind of reactivity-based problems as well, you can get there as well. And it comes from a place of love and it comes from a place of wanting to have a calm, happy, well-mannered companion because it comes from a place of love. So I hope that helps. If you've got any questions about Dobermans whatsoever, get involved down in the comment section below. And if you are new here, make sure you subscribe because we've got two Doberman specific videos coming to this channel every single week. So I can't wait to see you on the next episode of the Fenrir Doberman Show.